In this video, I'll show you how to use a cheap plastic dust sheet to create some amazing portraits. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And once again, you join me in my small home studio. Now, at some point, I've got a painting and decorating project to do in here, and I thought I'd cover up my equipment with some dust sheets. Now, these are large plastic sheets, and then I thought, you know what, these could make wonderful photo props. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you some great ideas using these large plastic sheets. Now, they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. I got loads of them. Both of these came from the pound store. One pound a bag. Absolutely brilliant. However, as I looked at this stuff, I realized it is quite industrial. There is going to be some post-processing, but don't worry. You'll see that in the pictures, and I'll show you the post-processing at the end of this video. Right, let's get some light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So once again, I've been joined in the studio by Beth, who's going to be the model for this shoot. Now, before we get too much into this, we need to think a little bit about health and safety. We are going to be covering Beth in a plastic sheet, and it will be fitting quite closely to her face. So Beth, if you feel like you're short of breath at any time, just let me know, okay? Be sensible with your models. Don't get them to do anything that you wouldn't be prepared to do yourself. Right, our first setup, simple black background, one light, I'm going to ask Beth to cover herself in the plastic and we're just going to let it fall down and drape like a veil. Let's try that. Once we've done that, we can try changing it a little bit more, getting a little bit more exciting or, or different by asking Beth to pull it right down over her face so she's completely under the middle of the sheet. Yeah, well, those are really nice. But this stuff has got more to it than just that. For example, it really is rather, rather floaty. It really does sort of, well, float like the lightest of fabrics, but of course it's actually plastic. And that gives me an idea, but I do need a, an assistant for this bit. So Sam, if you want to come in, we can get Sam just to uh, give this a little bit of a, a floaty movement. And that should help give us a bit more excitement into these shots. Let's try that. That's great. Okay, so that was really great fun, but here in the studio we have one more thing that can make this even more exciting, and that's a wind machine. So, uh, let's start the fans, please. If you want to keep hold of one, one end. So that arm, you just need to bring a little closer towards you. That's it. But a little, little higher up if you can. That's it. Hey, there you go. And then just turn a little bit more towards this light. And then finally, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to stick it to Beth's face by letting the breeze blow in. Now, this is where things could get a little bit dangerous. So, Beth, if you do end up with it stuck on your face and you need to get out, then let us know and we'll kill the fans immediately. So what I've done now is taken exactly the same plastic dust sheet, but this time I've stretched it out over a frame, which is actually just a background support and a couple of lighting stands. Now, Beth is behind this, so we're gonna shoot through it. I've got this reasonably tight, so we can kind of see her through. Not too tight, because this stuff will tear incredibly easily. What about lighting? The lighting's still the same, single light. I've got it kind of up in a fairly diagonal direction just to try and get some of the texture from this plastic. Uh, we'll take a meter reading for that. It's reading F8, that's great, that's what I want to shoot at. Let's try this shot, see how it looks. 
Beth is around about 40 centimetres back from the plastic, and although we can see her, she's not particularly sharp. That's because this is a diffuse material, it's, it's giving us a blurry view, but if we ask Beth to come closer so she's actually in contact with the plastic, well that's going to look very different. Now once again, we have to think about health and safety. Don't suffocate your model, that's not a good thing to do. But that kind of distance works really well. And when we do that, we actually get to see almost through as if it was completely clear, very nearly. And that works really nicely, it gives a great look. Okay, let's just try this and take a few shots like this. Now if you find that background is a little bit grey, because we have a, a white background that's fairly distant from our light source, well we can lighten that up a little bit using a second light. In this case this is the Evolve 200 from Flashpoint, which I'm just going to pop in round the back. It's on its pretty much its lowest possible power setting, just to elevate that white to a, a slightly lighter grey background. So for my final setup, what we've done is we've actually punctured a little hole through the plastic sheet. I'm going to ask Beth to look through it. Now for this shot, I want to have a very dramatic light. So I've got the light in much closer. That should give us a nice drop off in light on the background. So that drops to a darker gray. I've turned off the background light, but I need to re-meter the key light here. So I've got my light meter. I'm going to pop it where Beth's head's going to be, which is about there somewhere. F11, so it's a stop brighter than I'm shooting currently. I'll just reduce the power of the flash. Double check. Yep, F8. Okay, let's take this shot and see how it goes. So we're pretty much done for the shoot, so um, well this dust sheet's not going to get used again, so I kind of figure why not just destroy it completely. So I'm going to ask Beth just to rip it apart slowly. It's the end of the shoot, let's see what we get. Okay Beth, there you go. Three. Fantastic. Okay, they look absolutely brilliant. That was great fun to do. Beth was a total star doing that. But we need to do a little bit more work on these in Photoshop, so let's get one of these images into Photoshop and we'll do a quick edit right now. Now I've had a chance to look at the pictures from the shoot. They were fantastic straight out of camera. And although I don't need to, I like doing post-processing. So this is a typical picture and I did all of the editing, not here inside of Photoshop, but actually in Nick's software. So I'm going to go to Filter. Nick Software or Nick Collection and choose the Analog Effects Pro 2. Now, Nick Software, if you've never played with it before, it is a completely free piece of software that works in Photoshop and Lightroom. It used to be paid for, then Google bought it, and now it's been free for a couple of years. It takes a minute to load, but once it's in, well, you can start doing some wonderful things. First thing is, the standard effect isn't what I want, so I'm just going to come across to here where it says Classic Camera, press a little arrow, come down, and choose the Builder Camera Camera Kit. Now this will allow me to switch features on and off by coming to the left hand side and clicking either on the minus button if they're currently on, or the plus button. So I'm going to turn on bokeh, turn off dirt and scratches, and then I'm going to tidy away that side by clicking on the little button that just sort of tabs away that left hand side. Now there's a few things I need to change, the, the off the shelf isn't quite right, I'll turn off the bokeh by clicking on the, the tick and the lens vignetting, we'll come back to those. Let's deal with the film type. Now I do want it warm, but I don't want it that warm, I'm actually going to choose this one here, just the first level of warmness, and then I can reduce the strength, so it's a lot less strong, maybe sort of 50-ish percent, something like that, and I'll take away any grain by making it soft and big. Next, well, let's go through the other two. Let's work our way up. Let's do some lens vignetting. I'll turn that on. I'll change it from a circle to a bit more of a rectangle. And because the light's coming in from the right-hand side, I'm just going to drag my vignette off to the left so I have a bit more vignetting on the right just to counteract that light direction. 
Final one is going to be my bokeh. So let's turn the bokeh on. We'll increase the strength a little bit. And really what I want to do is just reposition it. So if I drag that up slightly and maybe just change the size and shape a little bit, let's go something a bit more like that and we'll rotate it around. There you go. That probably feels a little bit better. Yeah, I just want a little bit sort of a blurry edge. I just want it feeling like there is a, a sort of a blurry vignette in many ways. And that really adds a bit to the, the motion of the image. Now, when you're happy, click OK, which is just off the bottom of the screen. Now, if you want to find out more about how to use Nix software, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center, where my colleague Mark Wallace did a brilliant video on how to use Nix software. Right, that's loaded in. Let's see what we got. And that's nice, but I think just a little bit of a finish here, just drop the opacity for the effect layer because Nick Software puts itself on its own new layer, which is really handy. And I can just drop the opacity ever so slightly. And with a few other tweaks, there we go. There's my final image completed. Now, as I say, I do believe in not asking a model to do anything I wouldn't be prepared to do myself, hence I'm here. But it was amazing how much fun a one pound dust sheet could be. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more, then don't forget to click on the subscribe button. And of course, leave me a comment below as well. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.